Hi everyone, I'm Bart with Living in Ventura County. Thanks for joining us. Kaziah and I get calls all the time from folks who are interested in moving here and they have two main questions in mind. A, what they would like to do is put their home on the market and then at the same time make offers on homes here in Ventura County that are contingent on selling their home that's on the market. And then B, a little bit more competitive option, especially in this market with lower inventory, is they're interested in purchasing purchasing a home here first before selling their home. And with these two questions in mind, I have the perfect guest today. We're joined by Linda Bernal, and she is a senior mortgage consultant with Prosperity Home Mortgage and has been lending since 2001. So Linda, thank you so much for joining me. Well, thank you for having me, Bart. One of the things that I've heard you say is that home buyers should consider marrying the home, not the rate. Could you explain that for us a little bit? Yeah, Bart, as interest rates started to shoot upward in 2022, um, I don't know exactly where it came from, but lenders started to say, marry the home, date the rate, and divorce the rent. Right. Um, okay. And the idea behind this is go ahead and purchase the home, realizing that the interest rate you get today is not the interest rate that you're going to have forever. There will be an opportunity sometime in the next few years to refinance to a lower interest rate. But in the meantime, since we know that prices are going to continue to go up, it's great if you can buy a home now, secure that property, start living in it because everybody has to pay to live somewhere. When it's advantageous down the road, go ahead and refinance into a lower interest rate. Oh, that's an excellent point. I wanted to ask you about that you've mentioned as well is how lending can be a creative process. Yeah, lending is far more creative than most people think. <laughs> and it's not a one size fits all. Um, every buyer is different. Every property is unique. And every scenario has its own little quirks. So each time, what we'll really listen to what the buyers want, really figure out what their scenario is, and then help them put all the pieces together in a way that is most advantageous for them and for their family, not only for today, but we also want to kind of look down maybe three years, five years down the road and make sure that the solution we're coming up with now is going to serve them down the road as well. Okay, so let's talk about at least four or five potential ideas, keeping that thought in mind that lending is not a one size fits all. Um, so, so one question, if you could talk a little bit about just the idea of using an equity line on your current home. Yeah, Bart, some people already have an equity line, home equity line of credit, HELOC, you'll hear it referred to by different names, but some people will already have one on the primary residence that they're selling. And in that case, they can go ahead and access that line of credit, use that cash as down payment on the house they're wanting to purchase. Then when they sell the house that they're leaving, that equity line gets paid off just like their first mortgage. Yeah, and that's something that can any option where you're going to be pre-approved and be able to make a down payment is going to make you much more competitive in this market than if you're doing a contingent offer on selling your current home, right? Exactly. So yeah, this is a way to remove that contingency piece by being able to move forward prior to selling you know, the current home. Great. Right. Another one I've heard you mention is a bridge loan or a cross collateral loan. Could you tell us about that a little bit? Yeah, bridge loans used to be in the good old battle days, early 2000s. Uh, they were really quick and easy to put into place. And basically what they were is just a loan on your current home, um, allowing you to take out some of that equity to buy the new home before selling the current home. That's exactly what a bridge loan was designed for, is to bridge that gap between the sale of one home and the purchase of the other. They kind of went away when we had the big meltdown back in 2008. They have come back to some extent, but they're not the same bridge loan that they used to be. So the qualifications are a little bit different, a little can be a little more stringent, and they tend to be a little expensive. What I mean by expensive is not only the interest rate, but also they tend to be expensive because of closing costs. The other loan you mentioned, Bart, is a cross-collateral 
And what that is, is where you have a current property and you want to buy another property and your current property has a lot of equity in it. So what happens is you get one loan that actually encumbers both properties. So the equity in your current property, in essence, is being considered in the purchase of the new property. So then later on down the road, when you've moved into your new home and you sell the old one, then you can either completely pay off that cross collateral or you can pay it way down, whatever you want to do. But that is another lending option that a lot of people really haven't heard about. Cross collateral loans can also be a little bit pricey um, because of closing costs. Sometimes they have a flat $5,000 or $10,000 fee for the cross collateralization. And again, that's because the lender knows that in general, it's going to be a short term loan, at least at mm -hmm. that initial level, that initial loan amount, because you're going to sell one of the properties. So it is an option and it's a way where then you, Bart, don't have to make the offer, their offer to purchase on a new property contingent on the sale of the old one. Right. And for some people, cross collateral works really, really well. And for other people, it doesn't. But it is an idea, just something that you could explore and see if it works for you and your particular situation. What is the main difference then between that and the bridge loan? Well, the bridge loan is on the property. It's actually a lien against the property that you are going to sell, so your current home, whereas the cross collateral loan is one loan and it encumbers, encumbers your old property and the new property. Mm -hmm. So with, and oftentimes with a bridge loan, uh, the buyer ends up coming to close on that new property with no actual cash out of pocket, which is kind of cool. That works out really well for people because then they don't have to, for example, liquidate any of their investments, which would be a taxable event. Um, so again, for some people, it works really, really well. And it's worth a little bit of extra expense because it saves them from paying capital gains tax. And then for other people, you know, it really is not a workable option. Third idea I've heard you mention as well is using your current home as a rental property to help you qualify for your new loan. Correct. A lot of people don't realize that rather than selling their current home, they could possibly keep it as a rental. So what would that look like? Basically what happens is they would have to have some sort of cash for down payment on the new property. And then they're going to be departing their current home and turning it into a rental. So since they obviously can't really rent it out until after they're gone, because that would get a little cozy yeah. with the <laughs> renters, uh, what happens from the lending side is we say, okay, great. Let's just say they're going to be able to rent out their current home for $2,000 a month. Lenders can count 75% of that as income. We have to figure about a 25% expense ratio. And so we'd be able to count $1,500 dollars as income and that helps offset the current expense of that home and so then we put all the numbers together the expense of the current home the expense of the new home plus their regular income and that rental income and that's how we calculate the debt to income ratio so that's always an option as well and a lot of people don't realize that that's something they can do so rather than selling, they might want to be able to keep that and then have it become an income producing property. Right. Another option I, I had not heard of before that you told, told me about was actually borrowing from a brokerage account could, to, mm -hmm. to, in order to make your down payment. Could you talk to me about that? Yeah, some of the large brokerages, um, Morgan Stanley and some of the others, they have what's called um, securities-based lending. And what that means, it's just like a home equity line of credit. You're actually getting a loan, a line of credit, and the collateral for that loan is the equity in your home. Well, for the securities-based loan, it's the same thing, but the collateral for the loan is your portfolio at the brokerage. So if you have, say, a million dollars in stocks, bonds, mutual funds, you they usually will allow you to borrow up to, I think it's about 50%. And so you could, in theory, borrow about 500,000 from yourself. And the cool thing about that is you're not actually liquidating any investments. And so because of that, it's not a taxable event. You don't have to worry about capital gains taxes. Um, and they work very similarly to a HELOC 
in that the payments on those are, are interest only for a certain period of time. And I think, at least with some of them, that the interest that you do pay on that type of a loan that you're actually paying yourself, which is kind of cool. So that's something, again, it doesn't work for everyone. Not everyone has that kind of portfolio or not everyone's brokerage allows for that kind of a loan. But if someone does have those sorts of investments, it's always worth a call to your financial planner to see if that might work for you because it could be a great option for someone to consider. Absolutely. There would be no fee for doing that. Typically the brokerage only charges a small admin fee to get it set up. Okay. Um, I've heard $70, $90. So truly a very small fee wow. and it's very quick and your access to the cash is very, very, very quick as well. And the, the last thing I believe we were going to discuss is options for veterans. Could you t give us some information on VA loans? I know you, you've done a ton of them. Yeah, you bet, Bart. If someone has served our country, either active military or reservist, and has been awarded their entitlement, VA is hands down the best loan product out there. The interest rates are great. The loan guidelines are incredibly flexible. And the great thing is you can do 0% down up to about 1.5 million. No monthly mortgage insurance. It's a way to say thank you for your service. And so if someone has earned that, they should definitely check out VA. And something a lot of people don't know is you can reuse the entitlement. So if you purchase a home, you use your VA, and then you sell that home and want to buy another home, you can have your full entitlement restored and you can use it again. Okay. So it's not a one and done. How would that work out then? Let's say someone is currently owning a home on the East Coast. Can they, with the process of trying to buy here first, does that end up working out? Or If you have uh, a VA loan on your current home and you want to buy before that other home is sold, uh -huh. then there are ways, there's a certain amount of entitlement that everyone gets. Uh -huh. And even though one, even though part of your entitlement is tied up in the current home, there is still tight entitlement remaining, but there is a way to do that as well. So yeah, let's say they have a home on the East Coast. They're being transferred to the West Coast here in Ventura County, and they don't want to sell that other property. Maybe they're going to keep it as a rental. They can still use whatever VA entitlement they have remaining to purchase a home here. So they may still be able to do 0% down, or there may be a small down payment that's required just depending on how the math works out. Okay, great. Yeah, that's really interesting. Okay, well, these are so many great ideas, Linda. I really want to thank you for breaking this down for us. Well, thank you. And I love providing the information so that your buyers have a better idea of some of the options that are available to them when you're trying to help them find that dream home here in Ventura County. Yeah. And so if you're you're watching this from wherever you are around the country or the world, I will put Linda's contact information in the show more section. Also, please let us know, comment below. Is there another lending topic you would like us to cover? We'll definitely do that. And for any real estate questions, finding the home and actually getting under contract and going through that buying process, please contact Kaziah and myself as well. And thank you everyone for joining us and we'll see you next time.